It's Morning Edition from NPR News. I'm Michelle Martin. And I'm A. Martinez. Coming up on the BBC News Hour at 9 this morning, the latest on President Biden's trip to Israel amidst a volatile and dangerous diplomatic storm in the Middle East. Arab leaders have canceled planned meetings with him after an explosion in a hospital in Gaza killed civilians. That's the BBC News Hour coming up at 9 this morning on WNYC. And we're hearing too that the president may be speaking live once again in just a few minutes. If he does, we'll carry it live right here on WNYC. Fifty-eight with mostly cloudy skies out there. We see some sunshine. A high of sixty-four today and partly sunny. Then tomorrow, perhaps the warmest day of the week. Mostly sunny and sixty-seven. Right now, fifty-seven. Support for WNYC comes from Pace University. Pace is committed to helping people go further with programs in environmental law, finance, nursing, and the performing arts. In New York City, Westchester County, and online. Learn more at gogetters.pace.edu. The Central Park Conservancy. Central Park is a living work of art, and even lifelong New Yorkers don't know its biggest secret, that it is cared for by the Central Park Conservancy, its members, and volunteers. Learn more at centralparknyc.org. More Americans are saying they don't want to have children. Author Maria Coffey says this is how her life without children has been like. My husband and I have have created this very adventurous life. We've traveled around the world. We've gone on really wild expeditions. In her new book, Coffey is also honest about the guilt, doubt, and risks that have come with her decision never to be a parent. That's on the next On Point. Weeknights at 8 on 93.9 FM, AM 820, or live stream it at WNYC.org. Lululemon is joining an exclusive club. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by C3 AI. C3 Generative AI provides chat GPT enterprise search that is verifiable, secure, and accurate across all enterprise data. Learn more at C3.ai. This is Enterprise AI. From Marketplace, I'm Sabri Beneshore, in for David Brancaccio. Starting today, athleisure wear maker Lululemon Athletica will debut on the S&P 500. It'll replace Activision Blizzard because Activision Blizzard was acquired by Microsoft. Marketplace's Justin Ho looks at what it means for a company to join the S&P 500. There are plenty of perks that come with an S&P 500 membership card. Being on the S&P 500 gives you more visibility. That's Will Getzman, a finance professor at Yale. He spent decades following what happens when companies join the S&P 500. The big perk is a slice of the more than $5.5 trillion parked in mutual funds and ETFs that simply buy whatever's in the index. When a company's added to something like the S&P 500, a whole bunch of funds buy that firm, and then the price goes up. That investment comes with some complications. Drew Pascarella at Cornell University says companies prefer to be judged on their individual performance, like how well Lululemon's mid-rise pants are selling. But when a company joins an index, those factors can lose relevance. There are institutional investors that are buying and selling an index not based on what Lululemon is doing, but based overall on macroeconomic factors. That means big investors might start selling if they're worried about, say, global economic growth, interest rates, or consumer confidence as opposed to understanding that those macro factors might be more limited in their impact on one company versus others. Big investors have also been getting more aggressive when it comes to environmental and social issues, says Evan Raleigh at the University of Connecticut. There's like a a social contract that institutional investors believe firms have with society to behave in ways that are pro-social. So those issues will likely become more important for any company that joins the S&P 500. I'm Justin Howe for Marketplace. All right, let's do the numbers. Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ futures are all down with uh, in the 2 to 6 tenths percent range with the Dow futures down 75 points. The yield on the 10-year Treasury is 4.870%. After an explosion hit a hospital in Gaza, killing 500 people, Palestinian and Israeli officials blamed each other. Leaders of Arab states called off a planned visit with President Biden, who will instead only visit Israel. His trip was aimed at preventing the Israel-Hamas war from spreading. 
concerns over economic consequences of this war take a far back seat to the human tragedy. But there are geopolitical risks to the global economy, as Marketplace's Nancy Marshall Genzer reports. There are lots of ways the Israel-Hamas war could play out. The worst-case scenario, direct conflict between Israel and Iran. The geopolitical pot is just boiling. Bernard Baumol is chief global economist at the Economic Outlook Group. He says if the conflict widened to include Syria, global economic growth could decline next year by as much as 1%. And the global economy would really be on a tightrope over the possibility of a recession. Baumol says a wider conflict could send oil prices up to $120 a barrel. Other lesser known commodities could also be affected. Maybe you remember Bermian from high school chemistry class. Jesse Colvin is an analyst at Height Capital Markets. It's a key chemical component in electronics, including the manufacturing of semiconductor chips. Colvin says 74% of the world's bromine supply is produced in the Dead Sea, and Israel's bromine exports could be jeopardized if rockets hit Israeli ports. I'm Nancy Marshall Genzer for Marketplace. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Viking. Exploring the world in comfort, Viking offers a small ship experience with cultural enrichment and destination-focused dining. More at Viking.com. And by Charles Schwab. Schwab believes every investor deserves to work with a firm they can count on, with financial consultants ready to serve clients and 24-7 live help. The historic Hollywood writers' strike is over. The actors' strike is not. And if actors aren't acting, all kinds of other TV and film workers are also out of a job. Set builders, editors, employment in this sector is down 45,000 jobs since May. LAist's Robert Garova has more. Greg Gilday is a welder and set builder. He makes spaceships for a living. Not real ones, but the ones like you can see in the new Star Wars Ahsoka series. One must destroy in order to create. But right now, Gilday feels like he's fighting a battle in a galaxy not so far away. Because of the Hollywood stalemate, Gilday has been out of work for months. I've dug into my savings quite extensively and still have about $27,000 in debt that I did not have at the end of April, which is the last time I worked. He supports the strikers, but the work stoppage is hitting him and thousands of others hard. The Entertainment Community Fund said it's been distributing up to $700,000 each week in emergency grants for struggling workers. Keith McNutt is with the nonprofit and says the strike came just as many workers were still financially recovering from the pandemic. And people, I think, were just starting to rebuild their reserves, their savings for a rainy day, and it started raining before people were ready. In some cases, workers have had to get creative to pay the bills. For the past couple of months, they've held swap meets where prop masters, makeup artists, and costume designers can sell personal belongings. Film editor Deandra Luzon was one of some 70 vendors who showed up to sell. It was really great to see the camaraderie with all of us that are being impacted and just how special that was. Luzon says she made 1800 bucks selling off DVDs from her prized Criterion collection, a Darth Vader nutcracker she bought in Germany, and a special doll she'd wanted to keep in the family. It was a little sad with some of the things. Like, I, I got rid of a Cynthia doll from Rugrats. I was like, well, when I have a girl someday, I'll give her, like, you know, that, that doll. I don't think that's the extent that we should have to go to survive. I don't think it should ever go here. Mostly out of work since November, Luzon says she's gone through her savings, brought in a roommate, and started driving for Uber to make ends meet. In Los Angeles, I'm Robert Garova for Marketplace. And by the way, many employees here at Marketplace are members of the SAG-AFTRA union, but operate under a different contract and are obviously not on strike. In New York... I'm Sabri Beneshore with the Marketplace Morning Report. From APM, American Public Media.